Hello, bruv. Happy fourth. Fourth. F O R F. Fourth. As you can see, I'm in my basement with this hot weather I had to move down before I died. And as such, I've also rearranged the JFK from over there to over here, which is a great segue, an amazing segue, bruv, to Oswald's Tale, Norman Mailer, which I got for 10 cents at the library. What's this? Slosh off Dornak. I went to the fucking restaurant at Dornak, buddy. Right, good job, buddy. I think you all know who uh, Oswald is. Oswald has been shot. Oswald has been shot. I like it down there. I got my little fan going. My Miracle Whip jar. My milk crates to keep everything off the floor. Ice coffee, even though I had fucking leg cramps this morning. Anyway, Andrew Martin, the Bob, the Bobby Dazzlers. This book, I only got it because I. <laughs> Pardon. For some reason, coffee makes me sneeze. Maybe I'm allergic to it. The Bobby Dazzlers is a funny, macabre thriller about jealousy, drugs, media friendly. Yorkshireman, Solomon's Fishing, Modernist, Chair Design, and Gruesome Death. Both accidental and premeditated. All set against the backdrop of beautiful Georgian architecture. And some of England's finest countryside. That's great. Anyway, I only got it because of uh, the Bobby aspect. Journeys with Beef Oven, Following the Nymph and Bayond. Kerry Candelo and Greg Mitchell. So yeah, beef oven, as we know from Bill and Ted's. Was a great rock star. Yeah. I mean, I've passed these books up three or four times, and uh, it's come to my... Uh, I came to the conclusion that no one's ever buying journeys with beef oven or the Mazer myths. There's Mozart's skull. Hey, Mozart. Mozart, as they call him. A creepy looking little dude. Is he born in Kentucky? Didn't I see that somewhere? That fucking guy was born in Kentucky. <clears throat> born in Kentucky. Maybe I read that wrong. Mozart was born in Kentucky, buddy. Yeah, I don't know where I came up with that. <clears throat> Soul on Ice by Eldridge Cleaver. Pretty sure he had another name, too. I can't think of what it is. I bought, actually bought these last week at the library, but forgot to include them. So, yeah, I'm selling that one eventually get a crappy copy and keep it. Tales of My Chicken, Constance M. Jerlecki. The Life of George N. Smith, a pioneering missionary. The story of Detroit's once proud status as stove capital of the world. The fiery head-on collision of two passenger trains at Battle Creek. Tale of William Bayer Bryce, a Union soldier that returned home following the Civil War only to succumb to injuries resulting from his experience as a prisoner of the Confederacy. Yeah, exciting stuff. This one will even be even better. The Way Back Room, a memoir of a Detroit childhood by Mary Minnick. Or Minock. Mary, Mary, so quite contrary. She's cute. She's adorable. I don't know what it's about. 
Here is one of the most emotionally honest memoirs you will ever read. Mary Minnox, The Wayback Room, offers the abidingly moving narrative of a girl's life set against the blue-collar grit and texture of multi-ethnic pre-Vatican II Southwest Detroit. Her storytelling captures mood and setting with the skill evocative of Jeffrey Eugene, Eugene, oh, I said it guys, Euth, euthanized genics, Euth, euthogenics, what's that called, euthanasia, and what's the one where you kill people, eugenics, we just call them euthanizing eugenics, Jeffrey Eugenides, and with the lyricism of Philip Levine, I hate Philip Levine, that wasn't the right one. The Anatomy of Satire by Gilbert Hyatt. Obviously, it's about satire, diatribe, parody. Sounds like an interesting book. Probably not worth it. Jack Squat, but when does that ever stop me? Little table. Hello from Evan. Have you been contacted by a loved one who has died? No, I have not. Then again, do I really love anyone who is dead? Probably not. So I can't really say I've been contacted. Anyway, this book, and it's really crazy because the other night when I was driving home, because I bought these books yesterday, but I got busy cleaning up this shit. Building my shelves, sprucing stuff up, piling boxes upon boxes to make to keep all paper off the floor because this floor, as you can see, even though they painted it a few years back before I moved in, it's, retains moisture because it's a basement. That's why I'll never put carpet or anything down there. Anyway, driving home from work at one something in the morning. And George Norrie was talking to some guy, some charlatan like they all are. And the guy said, and George mentioned Bill Guggenheim, how he was an atheist until his uh, son, he heard a voice, something telling him to go out to the pool, and then his son was drowning. And then after that, George and his wife Judy, or was it Bill? Bill Guggenheim and his wife Judy started looking for signs, and they apparently heard from people from the dead too after their son almost died. Curious how that works. Well, that's how it works, apparently. Merlin, Abby, and the passenger. Passenger. Is that how you spell passenger? Is that how you spell passenger? I don't think so. Passenger. The Young Merlin trilogy, which I bought only because it had Mylar jackets. And said Mylar Jackets went on to three books. This book, which I bought last week. Terrell Murders, which I bought quite a bit ago. I'm not particularly happy with the Mylar Jacket, but it's covering the thing and that's all that matters. As you can see, there was a hole in the back of the fucking... Jacket, so and then Incarnation, which is part of a trilogy of books by a woman named Edith Ellis, who claimed that she was contacting Wilfred Brandon from Death from Beyond Beyond Our Living Spear. Let's get the exact term. Because it's kind of funny. Not funny, but funny like a clown. As master and pupil, author in Amanuenses, Amanuenses, Wilfred Brandon and I have been associated for 10 years. My father was a free thinker, a humanist. Where is the... I think it says it in here. 
The automatic transcription is by Edith Ellis, who writes this book by the author of the Open the Door. Open the Door is the first in the series. I have not tracked that one down. I bought these two, but I will get on to that part in a minute. It's his vivid explanation of life, as he says, it has lived after death. It gives, for the first time, an explanation of the progress and differing methods of incarnation, the Oriental and the Occidental way and the modern method. Also, it sets forth, in simple but scientific terms, the process of the soul's emergence, an adjustment to the etheric plane. The book explains the work of the White Brotherhood, a secular order founded in 1920 and dedicated to world peace and to caring for the victims of the World War of the Death. It contains a very clear picture of the way that mental creation in the ether takes place, which results in the various objects, architecture, etc. The chapters are filled with many human incidents that illustrate the system of life after death, even the inevitable humorous as well as the serious situations that occur. I believe Bill's dead. Is it Bill? No, Wilford. I believe Wilford is dead at this time, at the time of the writing. She was talking to him from beyond, but I could be wrong. I touched on the subject of incarnation in my previous book, Open the Door, but I think there is not among mortals a conception of the conditions which are important. Anyway, also I wish to make somewhat clear the process of the emergence of the etheric body when the mortal one dies, and of the subsequent adjustment of the soul to this plane as manifested by the different classes of mentalities. This explanation, brief as it is, should prepare anyone of at least average intelligence now in earth life for a constructive career when he comes to the etheric realm. Anyways, the reason why I purchased these books online for three and four bucks a piece, plus shipping, was that on the back of an envelope from the Laura Mundo Mundo collection were written the names of these two books and the other one open the door question mark and I will open that door but I'm also in contact with Laura Mundo's great niece who happens to have her aunts her aunts great aunts maybe it's her great great aunt whichever she happens to have her self-published autobiography and sent me it in its entirety so I'm reading that which is bizarre because it deals with poop and pee and sexual things as you, as you would imagine the story begins with childhood which she goes on and on about for 20 some pages it's kind of kind of sophomore shall I say anyway let's get on with this I will probably do something about that. Maybe perhaps even read the entire book on an audio track because my voice is just so conducive. The Love Poems and Sonnets of William the Shakespeare. 1957. Sonnets. From fairest creatures we desire increase, that thereby beauty's rose might never die. But as the riper should by time decrease, his tender air might bear his memory. But thou, contracted to thine own bright eyes, feedst thy light's flame with self-substantial fuel, making a famine where abundance lies, thyself thy foe. To thy sweet self too cruel, thou that art now the world's fresh ornament, and only herald to the gaudy spring, within thy own bud buriest thy content, and thy tender churl makest waste and niggardine. Whoa, whoa, I'm fucking cancelled. Niggardine. Pity the... <laughs> Pity the world, or else this glutton be, to eat the world's dew by the grave in thee. I think I just made my own fucking deathbed by saying that word twice. Not thrice, but twice. So yeah, another book for the Shakespearean. Cobb by Al Stump. 
the most powerful baseball biography I have read by Roger Kahn, author of The Boys of Summer. I've had this book a few times and sold it just as many times. And if it's worth money, I'll probably sell it again. Although I'm interested in baseball, I've got other pursuits. And sports is a distraction. The Wild Unt by Jane Yolen, which is another, I don't know if it's a continuation of that series, but I'll sell it with those other ones. I gotta take this cover off. There's another book I got purely for the Mylon jacket. Cornering Creative Writing, Merit Reading Center, Bay City. Bay, B-A-E City. Nashville, Tennessee. Watch this book's probably worth seventy-three thousand dollars. Nineteen seventy-four. Yeah, I got that solely for that. Afri African American religion. This one I got to sell. Not that I'm not into African American religion. I'm not into any religion. It's pretty cool cover art, but. Books by Rutledge, Rutledge, or Rutledge, whatever it may be, tend to be worth money while they're in their highest value range. They're scholarly, is what I'm saying. This book I bought purely because when I buy 13 books, as I normally do, it is six dollars and fifty cents plus what's tax 36 no what is our tax now six percent so it'd be 36 cents dude why am i fucking failing here twelve dollars sixty six fifty plus 36 cents or is it only 34 cents Either way, it comes out to like three or six eighty something, and they always say, "Hey, you want to round up?" So I got this book for free because I would have normally rounded up and if I wouldn't have bought. If I had bought fourteen like I wanted to, I would have had to give them like ninety cents to round up or sixty cents. But instead. I went to 15 to make it $6.95 or $7.95. Is that right? Yeah, $7.95. So then I only rounded up five cents. And I got a free book about fucking birds. How does that feel? Gwen Fostick. These books, surprisingly, these little Michigan Happy Thoughts books, by a woman named Gwen Frostick are seemingly worth money even though they're just powder puff poems but I guess maybe people like the woodcuts I don't know so I bought it because it was only 10 cents and if it's worth anything I will sell it if not it will go in my Michigan collection the original illustrated Arthur Conan Doyle Suspenseful Tales by the author of Sherlock Holmes with all 236 illustrations from the Strand Magazine. What the hell is this? Some bitch sign? By Arthur, Con Arthur Con Conan Doyle. Maybe he came back. Love Temp. Tim B. Temp. No, oh, did you consider this a Sherlock Holmes? Are they from Sherlock Holmes? I don't think so. No one. I thought they were. The Close Encounters, man. I bought another guy, or 
another guy, but another book by a guy who must have owned this book. Just scan through. <laughs> Too wordy. Novel concludes. I can't read this guy. Never concludes that E.T. exists. Oh, no. So, yeah. There's a bunch of books I've seen by it that this guy must have owned because he gets pissed. That, um... Uh, books suck or whatever he's angry at these books but I didn't really get it for fucking the story I just got it because it's UFOs and I might need it with Laura Mundos which is why I got this Communion and True Story by Whitley Street but this looks like it has some woo, woo to damage Anyway, gonna look nice in a dust jacket along with that one. Stonehenge complete. Everything important, interesting, or odd that has been written or painted. Discovered or imagined about the most ex extraordinary ancient building in the world. A gift for Goth. Does it say Goth? Gabby? Gatsby? for matriculating all over the place in December 87 from Little Arnold to the prairie does that say the little, little house on the prairie I don't know what the fuck that says I got this one for both the book itself and the mylar has some value, I'll keep the mylar on it. If not, I'll just take the fucking thing. Jeffrey Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales. Selected, translated, and adapted by Barbara Cohen. Obviously, it's ex libris. Once near a wood in a valley, a poor old widow lived in a narrow cottage. It's about the widow that I'll tell you a story. It's about this widow that I'll tell you a story. Since her husband's death, she lived a simple life. She didn't have much money, but she didn't have many animals. But from what God gave her, she managed to support herself and her two daughters. She had three large sows, three cows, and a sheep named Molly. So yeah, another book that I'll never read. Good times.